Welcome to another Outlet at Home experience. I'm Vince Thomas, lead pastor of the Outlet Community Church, and I want to thank you for being with us on today. Whether you're watching live, you're catching the rebroadcast, or you're listening to the audio podcast, my heart's desire is that the words today will bring you clarity and encouragement and hope to carry out whatever God has called for you to do. If it's your very first time watching today, I want to welcome you and thank you for being with us here at the Outlet Community. Our goal is to be relevant and pray that this word is able to be applied to your life. If you're returning and watching again or a member, a partner, a friend of our ministry, God bless you and thank you for being a part of our at-home experience today. we are come to the end of the first 31 days of 2021. And I want to speak on behalf of my wife and myself. I just want to thank you for plugging in and being a part of this season of prayer. We extended our season of prayer by 10 days. And so in the last 10, I've seen you all continue to press in. I've seen you all continue to show up for prayer. I've seen you all continue to stay committed in your Bible reading. And our heart's desire is that we just don't throw away all of the disciplines that we've put in in the first month of this year, but we believe that this is going to set the tone for not only this year, but the rest of your life. But to help, I believe it's important at the Outlet community that we empower, we equip, we develop, and we deploy people to build community and create legacy. So we have a responsibility to provide the tools to do just that. And on today, I want to present to you one of the biggest technological advances that we're able to pass on to all of the families, all of the members, all of the individuals who are not only connected to the outlet, but are also connected to those who are a part of our ministry as well. So I want you to watch this video, and I'll be back in just a moment to share with you how this tool will be used here at our church. Welcome to our study of the Gospel of John. I have fallen in love with the work of Paul as I've studied the book of 1 Corinthians, and I believe you will too. This is where Jesus taught in Capernaum, and you have to understand this scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And over the next six weeks, we're gonna look deeply into the 23rd Psalm. Right Now Media. It's for groups. It's for personal devotion. It's for parents. The bullseye of parenting is to raise children who become like Jesus. It's for kids. This is Phil. We're digging into the Bible, which, as we've mentioned, is more than just a book. It's for tough times. So when you recognize that you're trying to have a conversation with your spouse and they're not ready to talk, it's not helpful to keep pressing them. It's for every phase of life. If you've made mistakes with money, you know what that makes you? Over 12. And now, it's yours. We've purchased a Right Now Media subscription for everyone in our church. So check your inbox for the digital invitation and download the app for instant access to thousands of biblically-based videos. Get equipped. Get inspired. Well, as you can see, we are excited. We are even thrilled more so that we are able to come alongside you in your personal growth and development. The opportunities are limitless inside of the Right Now Media app. As you can see, you can download this. This is available not only for uh, those who are looking to grow in your walk with God, but there's also tools in there to grow in, in leadership, in your financial acumen. But what I'm really thrilled about is that our children, our youth, our teens are able to have content 24 hours a day, seven days a week that goes directly to their devices. And we believe that this will serve as a complement to our emerging gen network that we are galvanizing and getting back up and running on this year. 
we have a responsibility to make sure that the word of God is able to be delivered in any medium possible, but true as to outlet form. This is not just for our members only. So if there are individuals that you know, there are family members that you know that would benefit from this, this is a part of the ministry of the outlet community. We believe God did not only call us to empower our church members and our church members only. We believe that we are to play a part in this world to empower anyone who has a desire to grow in the knowledge of Christ. And we'll follow up with you to make sure that you have all of the login credentials that are necessary and walk you through the next steps to send those links to everyone else. And as a part of our ministry, we are assuming what we're calling an investment into the spiritual growth and development for anyone who desires to do so. But I'm also excited today because we're coming to the close of our God Rebuild My Life series. We have spent this first month really seeking the face of God through prayer, going through the book of Proverbs and getting wisdom from the Lord. And as we've gone through this series, God is asking us to tear down anything that wasn't built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and the revelation of who he is. And then in the next thing we learned is that he wants us to grow in wisdom. He wants us to grow in skilled application of the very things that we're reading. But it required us to have humility and surrender our life at the feet of the Father and say, God, if it's not something you want me to have, God, it's not something I'm willing to pursue. But on last week, we started a conversation on discernment or unusual wisdom that we're going to pick up on and close out with today. And so as I encouraged you on last week to get your notes ready, I'm encouraging you today to do the very same thing. We're going to go through the Word of God. I'm going to give you all some tips, some tools, some nuggets, some questions to ask so that you can operate in a higher level of discernment in all areas of your life. And if you would, join me in 1 Kings chapter 3. This is where we had our thematic thrust on last week. We're going to go back there and read the tail end of our text in uh, 1 Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. And we're going to read verse 9 through 13. It says, and this is Solomon speaking, and he's asking the Lord, Give me an understanding heart so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and wrong. For who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours? Verse 10, the Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, because you have asked for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for long life or wealth or death of your enemies, I will give you what you ask for and I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has had or ever will have. Here's verse 13, and I will give you what you did not ask for, riches and fame. And no other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. Let's get ready to delve into the conclusion of unusual wisdom. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, during this moment in time as we're putting a bow on this series, surely we have not exhausted everything the Word has to say about wisdom and everything the Word has to say about rebuilding our life. But, Lord, I'm asking that you create a hunger in all of us to continue to search out your Scriptures for wisdom. May it not just be a topic for this month only, but may the quest and the search for wisdom be our heart's priority in everything that we do. Holy Spirit, illuminate these words. Prepare the hearts to receive them. May they get revelation so that they may apply it in their life. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a Greek legend uh, during the Trojan War that uh, the Greeks were sending a quote-unquote gift to uh, Troy in the siege of Troy. Uh, when they sent the gift, they gave off the appearance that they were resigning from the war but instead, when they sent this gift, which was a gigantic, hollow, wooden horse, uh, the city of Troy and the Trojans took the gift in. That gift is now known as the Trojan horse. And as legend would have it, in the night, when everyone was asleep and all the defenses were down, the Greeks hopped out of the Trojan horse and took siege and destroyed the city. When I think about the myth of the Trojan horse, it's something that stands out to me in the need for discernment. You see, without discernment, we will not understand what's happening in our world. We will uh, make the wrong assumptions about 
things that are being presented to us. We'll let our guards down when they need to actually be up and in force. And I want to encourage you today that in your life, I want you to take inventory of everything in your life and see, is this something that God sent or is this something that I created? Is this something that I allowed and it's going to help me in this season of my life? Or is this something that I'm tolerating because I don't know what to do with it in this season of my life? But in all things, I don't want these quote unquote Trojan horses staying dormant in your life to where defenses are let down and they're beginning to take over areas of your life that you one time had the victory and had control over. In all of our lives, if we do not use discernment, what we used to conquer will begin to conquer us. We cannot think that areas in our life that we at one time overcame that we can get prideful and think I don't have to maintain them. Whether you have a great business, whether you have uh, a great family, if you do not do what is necessary to maintain, to rid yourself of the small foxes, things will begin to get out of alignment and you begin having problems in areas in which you didn't have problems before. So we need discernment. We need unusual wisdom. And just for a point of recap, before we move forward, for every person who may have not heard last week's message, just want to bring us to a common point of understanding before we build some more. Uh, when we talk about discernment, we're talking about the quality of being able to grasp and comprehend what is obscure. It's the ability to be able to see what is not evident to the average mind. It's the gift of coupling skill and understanding. And it's the proper balance between wise judgment and suspicion. You see, the first place that we are to apply discernment to is our own life. And I want to, for a moment, talk about the difference between self-discernment and self Deception. In fact, self-discernment, which is also known in the social-emotional learning environments as self-awareness, combats self-deception. There's a saying that says, we can lie to everybody else, but there's one person that we should not lie to, and that's ourself. But the reality is, the one person that we lie to the most at times is ourself. Sometimes it's intentional, and other times it's unintentional. But, but we need to drill down even further because looking at our life, there are areas that are called blind spots. There are areas that we don't know that we need to possibly grow in. There's, there's areas in our life that we know that we should probably do better, but then there are places that are completely hidden. And in Psalm 19 and 12, it says, how can I know the sins lurking in my heart? But God, my heart's desire, and this is the, the desire of someone who is looking to increase in discernment in their own life, their prayer is cleanse me from these hidden faults. Well, how are we cleansed? Psalm 30, 139, uh, verse 1, it says, O oh Lord, you have examined my heart, and you know, God, everything about me. I want that to be a prayer of yours each day. God, examine my heart. And if there's anything in there that does not reflect you or look like you, God, I'm asking that you remove it and give me the grace to take the steps to remove it away from me. As you're taking this journey through self-discernment or self-awareness, uh, what you'll notice is that you'll become more accurate in reading character and motives. And, and the first place that we need to read character is in our own life. And we need to determine what are our motives? Why are we doing the things that we're doing? As you're growing in self-awareness or self-discernment, you'll be able to distinguish and select what is true, what is appropriate, and what is excellent. Hear me when I say that we need to understand what is true, what is appropriate, and what is excellent. The book of Proverbs calls this discretion. When we grow in, in, in self-discernment, we're able to be able to see what goes beyond what is obvious what goes beyond what is superficial. But the greatest good from growing in self-awareness is that we'll have understanding coupled with empathy. So not only do we understand what's going on in our lives and maybe in the lives of those around us, but we're able to operate in a level of emotional intelligence where we're able to walk alongside people as opposed to looking down our nose and saying, how could they be that way? How could they act like that? How could they do that? We could say, I understand that people are different than, than I am. And, you know, wherever you are, 
I want to put myself in the mindset that seeks to understand where you are so we can walk together. Because when someone is self-aware, they realize that they don't have it all together. And I don't know if you're out there and, and you can agree with me uh, that, listen, there's some areas in our life that we know if it wasn't for the grace of God, we would be, we, we would be, we would be in a pretty tough place. <laughs> if that's you, type, that's me. Come on. See the comfort in seeing that you're not the only one in, with areas of your life that need to be shored up and need to be improved. We are all in this together. Uh, recently, my wife and I were a part of a, a podcast, and uh, one of the questions were about what happens when someone says that they don't go to church because they can't trust uh, the pastor. I said, listen, I'm the pastor of my own church, and sometimes I can't trust myself either. I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that we need God's help to expose the areas of our life that could cause further damage than what they're already doing, even in the places that are secret and hidden. But as we're talking about this sermon, I, I want to give you all a theological and a doctrinal underpinning of this topic of discernment. And for the sake of today, I, I want to invite all of you to be a part of the Outlet Leadership Institute. So right now you all are a part and are now colleagues, a part of our uh, inaugural cohort that we have going on. So welcome to the Outlet Leadership Institute. Now, I want you to go in your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we're going to have a quick Bible study in the midst of this lesson right now. So go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I want to give you a theological as well as a doctrinal underpinning to discernment. Because discernment is a spiritual gift that has practical application. But in order to understand the nature behind discernment, we need to look at the Pauline letter to 1 Corinthians, or to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and he's going to give us some context as to how spiritual gifts work. So if you have your Bibles, go 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 1. And it says, Now, dear brothers and sisters, regarding your question about the special ability the Spirit gives us, I don't want you to misunderstand this. You know that when you were still pagans, you were led astray and swept along in worshiping speechless idols. So I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God will curse Jesus, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who works in us all. So when we're understanding spiritual gifts, although they're different expressions of spiritual gifts, they're all coming from Holy Spirit. And just for a brief synopsis, I want to let you all know that there are three categories of spiritual gifts. The first category is that they're speaking gifts. The second category is that they're power gifts. The third category, which we're talking about today, there are revelation gifts, and these gifts come from Holy Spirit which is important to keep our spirits clear and our spirits open. So the discipline of praying and fasting, what it does is it silences the voice of our flesh. So our flesh deals in the sense realm, what we naturally see, what we naturally hear, what we naturally feel. Uh, all of those things are a, resort, a result rather, of the flesh. And within the flesh, there dwells no good thing. So if we're led by our flesh, we are going to lead ourselves to decisions that will cause us to decay. Our natural fleshly impulses, which are not born again, no matter how saved you are, no matter how much you read the word, your fleshly impulses will try to pull you to a quality of life that is irreprehensible. So it's important for us to keep our spirits clear as much as possible. So in our world today, we're inundated with all types of information as well as stimuli pointing us in a direction that is antithetical to the direction of the spirit. So if we're talking about discernment and we're talking about how this is a spiritual gift with natural application. That means that I need to clear out anything that may cause baggage or a blockage to allowing my spirit to hear what it needs to hear. So let's just take discernment in relationships. 
if I've gotten my feelings caught up into something and I've got my heart tied up into something, my flesh now dominates the voice of the Spirit. Holy Spirit is a gentleman, so he will not force you to do something against your will. So there's a lot of things that are different between our hope and our will. We could hope all day long that we change. We could hope all day long for the right decisions to be made in our life. But until we align our will to enforce the hope that we have, we're going to stay doing the same things and frustrated because we're hoping for something different. So in our lives, that's why when you have a major decision to make, you need to remove any distracting force out of your life. That means that you might have to cut off the TV. You might have to limit your social media download time. You might have to limit the music that is different from what you need to get your spirit stirred up to hear. And, and I really want us to talk about this right now because all of last year when our lives were disrupted and we were going through all of these patterns, it, it, it disrupted what was the norm. And so when we go into survival mode, we lose the habits that produce success. And so after people got out of survival mode, they began putting certain disciplines back. But unless you are committed to keeping these disciplines in place, when disruption comes, you'll stop doing what is right because it's right. And so what we've seen through disruption is that there were habits, there were addictions, there were things that we thought we were free from that kept pulling us back because the flesh had more pull than our spirit. And quite honestly, that was the reason as to why we didn't push so hard on the fasting component this year because the greater good in all of this is that we needed people to spend more time praying. I need people to pray. You see, when you commit to praying, you're going to listen to the Holy Spirit and he's going to tell you what you should and should not do concerning your diet and your regimen and your lifestyle and your choices. But if I have you just eliminating food and you're not praying, you're not giving the Spirit access to do what he needs to do. So this is why when it, you have to make tough decisions, get your body out of the way. What do I mean by that? Listen, let's, if we're talking brass tacks in relationships, if you are unsure if this relationship is going to work, minimize your interactions that cause your bodies and your feelings to convolute what you believe Holy Spirit is asking you to do. Now, we could go even further, which we will in just a couple weeks when we come back in relationships. But this is how we use discernment on a daily basis. But what happens when I can't tell if this is God? Is it me? Is the devil? What's going on? I feel strongly about something, but I don't know. Is this discernment? Like, I, how, do, how do I tell? Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it is the only thing. The Word of God is the only thing that is able to cut between what I'm feeling versus what I'm knowing. Hear me when I say that. That's, that's, that's revelation right there. Your spirit deals in the element of knowing. When, when you hear something in your spirit, it's like in my heart, I just know. There's nothing externally that's telling me that it's going to be this way, but in my heart, I know. When it's your feelings, it's like, well, I feel this way, but then this object or this situation or this piece of information could change how I'm feeling. And so when you want to get pinpoint into, is this the spirit? Your spirit, it speaks proactively and it doesn't change because of the increase or decrease of information. Boy, this is not in my notes, but we need to talk about it. So when, when Holy Spirit talks to you, He's going to tell you something that whether or not you get a piece of information or something changes, the word of God is sure. But your feelings, this is how you know it's feeling, is that if you are trying to, what I call fleece, okay, if they call me at this time and say this, then I know. That's fleecing. That's, that's leaving things to chance. Holy Spirit is accurate. He's direct. And so we have to spend the time in the word and in Hebrews 4.13, it says nothing in all creation is hidden from God. So going to God gives us the insight of things that we can't see naturally. 
says everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he's the one in whom we are accountable. And so if we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, and j- definitely for further reading, read verses 10 and 11. And really in 11, as we've gone through all, all the gifts, in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, it says, It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. It's he alone that decides which gift each person should have. And so one time somebody uh, asked Oral Roberts, who was the one who founded Oral Roberts University, uh, which is the most important spiritual gift out of them all? Out of the nine, which is the most important? And Oral Roberts said something that, I, that I've held to my heart to this day. He said, just get so filled up with Holy Spirit that he can use you in any way he deems necessary. So as we're talking about discernment, what discernment will allow you to do is open yourself to be utilized by God in all different areas. And I, I wish I had more time to really delve into spiritual gifts. And, and I'm sure uh, inside of our Leadership Institute, we'll do more of that uh, just for the, the purpose of today. I just kind of want to give you a brief theological and doctrinal underpinning. But more so, what I want you to see is that the gift of discernment was used by average people and imperfect people like you and me. I think about in the book of Acts, uh, Peter, who prior to Christ's death and crucifixion denied him ran. Um, You know, as soon as he got in alignment with Holy Spirit, he was utilized greatly at the start of the early church. And we see him using discernment in Acts chapter 5 and verse 3 regarding Ananias and Sapphira, a very famous story inside of uh, of, uh, New Testament reading, where two individuals on the outside appeared as if they were believers, which they weren't. Again, don't have time to get into that right now. Uh, And then they appeared to be participating in the irrational generosity that was going on in the New Testament church, which they were not. They were actually lying. And the Holy Spirit was able to see direct that not only are they not believers, but they're also their motives and their heart is not right concerning the things of God. Peter was able to see that in Acts chapter eight, verses 18 to 23. uh, There was a gentleman by the name of Simon who wanted to buy the anointing. He wanted to buy the gift. And, 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 and I, I'm just led to talk about this today. My Lord, y'all are pulling on me this morning. Y'all are pulling on me. So we see Simon trying to buy what God freely gave in the gift of Holy Spirit. And, and I want to caution you. I understand that there are so many things that are out here that we can become a part of. We can get into tarot cards. We can get into fortune telling. We can get into palm reading because we're trying to buy what God has freely given. Now, you're not going to hell because you've bought all, you know, you may have bought it or you, you've bought into something or you've gotten a part. I'm not saying you're going to hell. But what I am saying is that why would you pay for something God has freely given you on the inside? You see, Paul, uh, Peter, rather, was able to discern that Simon was trying to buy what was freely given. And he told him that he, he'll perish away with his money because this is something that was truly from God. But I want us to close with the five areas that you're going to need unusual wisdom in. Uh, uh, Proverbs 16 and 22 says, discretion is a life-giving fountain to those who possess it. It says, but discipline is wasted on fools. So there are five areas that when we, as we close out this series that I want you to operate in with full wisdom, unusual wisdom. I want you to ask God to really make sure that these areas of your life are built on the foundation of Christ. And in these five areas, number one is integrity. Number two, it's your legacy. Number three, it's your conscience. Number four, it's personal growth and development. And number five, it's your relationships. Let me say that again. The five areas that I would love for you all to have unusual wisdom, and this is where you need unusual wisdom, is integrity, legacy, your conscience, personal growth and development, and your relationships. Proverbs 5 and 2 says, then you will show discernment. and Your lips will express what you've learned. So practically, how do I increase discernment and how do I increase unusual wisdom in these areas? And the question that we want to ask is, what would love require of me? 
My wife and I are going to begin a series on relationships, dealing with all the various seasons that come with relationships on Sunday, February 14th. And so we'll delve more into this question at that time. But what you want to ask is, in the decision that I'm going to make, it might not be popular, but am I doing it from a place of love? Sometimes love causes you to make the tough decisions. It causes you to take tough stands. Because if you aren't first true to yourself, you'll be living a life of resentment. But if you don't make decisions of love, you'll be accommodating toxic and sometimes dysfunctional behavior. And that's not what any of us should do when we're faced with decisions. But this series has just, I believe we probably have just begun when it comes to God rebuild my life. And as we're bringing this, this service this day to a close, I'm reminded of on yesterday, we had our day of healing that was absolutely phenomenal. I believe that all of us should make it a priority at least once a year to do some deep soul searching and to deal with the areas that we've allowed to kind of get closed, dark, hidden in the back. All of us have these areas that we need to kind of shine the light of God's word and his love and his grace in a safe environment on. And the day of healing that we had yesterday was phenomenal. And our desire is that we can birth even more life groups that will lead the family and friends of our life through conversations that help them to making quality decisions. Uh, As we conclude this series, uh, I'm just thinking of on next week, we are going to have Vision Sunday. And this Vision Sunday was birthed out of this season of prayer. And I want to charge every person who is listening to join us on next week. My wife and I want to share with you the heart behind the Outlet Community Church and for some who may not know the history of our ministry. But I believe that we have heard from God concerning the future of our ministry and we want to share what our next steps are. Right now as we're recording, we're um, here in one of our partners in the city, uh, Redeemer Community Church and Uh, We're partnering with them to do outreach in our city to provide food in areas that uh, are dealing with the level of food insecurity. We're making sure that uh, the elderly are being cared for. Not only do they have food, but they have companionship and someone to look after them. Uh, We're really uh, blessed to be able to partner with Redeemer concerning their Jobs for Life program because I believe that we have a responsibility to help those in our community looking to get rid and get past the barriers of economic mobility. As a church, when we grow in wisdom, when we allow God to rebuild our life, it's not just for us alone, but it's for the world that we're called to reach. Amen. Amen. Well, what I want to do right now is, before we close out today in worship, is I just want to say a a specific prayer for you, for your family, for your household. If there's anyone watching right now and you're like, listen, I need God's help with my life. There's just so much going on and I don't know where to start. I want to pray with you today. And I want to partner alongside of you by the grace and by the Spirit of God that he will reveal to you what it is you're supposed to do next and that you'll begin to take that next step, the step closer to him. After we pray and have worship, we'll also go to our e-groups, and we'll unpack this word today, these questions. Uh, I'm just, my heart is just so full right now. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, you are awesome. You are wonderful. You are so amazing. And God, right now, I'm joining my brothers and sisters who are watching, who are listening. May you be with them. May you be for them. May your face surround them and cover them. May your grace be a shield in all their ways. Father, I pray that for every person who has made a genuine heart decision for you, Father, may you send laborers across their path to help them in this journey of life. May we grow in unusual wisdom by seeking you in your direction before we do anything else. It's in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. God bless you all. Thank you so much for those who have watched today and those also who have prayed. There's some information coming up on screen uh, where you can just text and let us know that you prayed with us. Uh, simply text, I prayed with you to 770-667-4899. Well, we love you so much. Let's worship God together. Why don't we join in and sing this chorus together? You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am who you say I am. You've crowned me with confidence. I'm seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the world. Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. And you've crowned me with confidence, I'm seated in the heavenly place undefeated with the one who has conquered it all. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.